Hey guys, how's it going? In case you didn't know, I'm Alice and this is Tyg. Renos, yeah. hello, how are you getting on? He has his own channel and we decided to do a collab today. He came down all the way from Galway and we just made a video for his channel. So be sure to go check that out as well as this one. But today I'm just going to be asking Tyg a few questions. Tyg has a stammer and he vlogs and he's made a lot of videos about his story and stuff like that. And I'm kind of interested to learn more about that. But recently, I have just also discovered <laughs> that he was in the Barcelona terror attacks. So we're going to find we're out a bit, about, that, anyway. a bit about that as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll start with that. So you were on holidays in Barcelona. Yeah, so we'll start from the start. I uh, went to Barcelona on holidays in August of last year with three friends. Uh, we went to a music festival over there. We were there for, I think, a week. And it was really, really good crack light. And then on the last day, we were going for food, walking up, um, it's like the Grafton Street, Barcelona. It's called mm -hmm. Las Ramblas. Las Ramblas, Las Ramblas yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, walking up Las Ramblas. And um, next thing, there was literally a van started driving up the street. I think it killed like 12 people or just, yeah, literally was um, going up the street. So we just um, heard people running and screaming and all this kind of stuff. Went into our hostel, get our bags, and we were in there for like half an hour maybe came out and everyone's going crazy police everywhere oh all this God. kind of stuff so then we had to hide we were told to go into the underground train station probably the worst place you could hide for a terrorist attack for like two hours the whole time we're down there i'm literally almost in tears down in the underground oh train gosh. station and uh we're just thinking that um, lad's gonna come down here now with a gun and just blow the place up or go shooting or oh something like God. that uh nuts. yeah mom going crazy uh <laughs> Then we hopped on a train then, we literally just hopped on the first train that came and went to the airport. Airport was crazy as well. Oh, I'd say. Were yeah. you afraid to get on a plane? Um, not really, because we kind of heard at that stage that the two lads were like caught. I think one of them got killed, the terrorist mm -hmm. lads. And there was like loads of guards at the airport with like guns and all this kind of stuff. And we thought our flights were going to be cancelled. Yeah. But I think our flights was actually like one of the last ones. And then after that, um, that's madness. They got cancelled. Would it um, <laughs> put me off? Stop you going back, or no, you no? can't. You can't not go somewhere because yeah. stuff like that. Like you know. Did it ever cross your mind anything like that? It was going to happen. Yeah, or like any you'd ever it experience it anything it like that. It didn't pop into my head once because not long before that there was something in Paris, kind yeah. of the same thing. Yeah. And literally, it didn't pop into my head once that this could happen to us, like until it actually happened. Like. Yeah, and I was telling Tyg that when I was in Barcelona, I we both went in the same summer, but I went in June, you went in August. Mm -hmm. And me and my friends were at a viewpoint and we were looking down, we could see Las Ramblas and we were like, if a terror attack was ever to happen, we'd be we'd able be able to see it. it from here. And he was actually <laughs> in it. I saw it. Can you describe the fear? Uh, it's not even kind of, I wasn't really that kind of scared at the time because it's just more like, adrenaline kind of you just want to just get out of there as quickly as you can and it was literally about a week after that I started to think about what had happened like because I went home and the whole way home even like at the house talking to my parents about it and all that kind of stuff I was fine talking about it but it was then like afterwards that you start thinking Jesus I was so close <laughs> to being Jesus killed Christ. I was literally 200 meters up the road when it happened like did you see the van <laughs> uh we saw it after when we walked back out of the oh. um out of the hostel it was just kind of like pulled up at the side and stuff yeah. that's madness and what was it like to see it on the news knowing that you'd been there yeah and actually one of the lads who was driving the van didn't get caught for like a week after i think so oh, really? the whole time it was on the news about how they were trying to find this lad and i was like that lad almost killed me like he's still on the run <laughs> that's mental isn't it mad though this random guy that he was only you'd like never you'd never yeah you'd yeah. never come across he could have like me, yeah. ended your life or yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. has it changed your perspective on life on traveling or? or like on being alive do you say that that's your near death experience yeah it's kind of like i was so close to dying then like i suppose um the way that i was thinking about it for a while is how it puts like things into perspective say for example if you fail an exam or something like that you think it's the end of the world when it's not like it's yeah. not that big a deal yeah but i made a video about terrorist attacks so yeah go go time. check that out it'll probably be <laughs> Probably be more in depth. It's a good bit back now. It was back in like August, but you'll find it. Somewhere. Yeah. So getting back to the whole stammer and everything yeah, like that, the, which was the main, which was the main thing we were going to do in until this video brought until he video. brought up the, <laughs> the terror attack. Basically, I just wanted to know what's it like to have a stammer. How does it feel? Shit. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically um, my mom has a stammer and my auntie has a stammer. Uh, so it runs in the genes and it tends to be more males. So there's 1% of the population have a stammer and 70% of people who have stammers are males. Okay. And uh, yeah, so I've had it my whole life since the day I was born. My sister doesn't have it because she's a girl, so she got out lucky. So I went to like um, speech therapy, all this kind of stuff all along, spent thousands in speech therapy and all this. And then my auntie joined um, a program called the Maguire program. She joined it about 10 years ago now at this stage. And I joined it when I was 18, June 2014. And it basically, it teaches you a new way of breathing. So what do you do? Like a normal person would breathe out of their curl diaphragm. And I learned how to breathe. They put like a belt on you and they teach you how to breathe out of your costal diaphragm. When you stammer, you get blocked in your mouth and your vocal cords. It keeps it down here and just kind of, you can like kind of breathe more. Mm -hmm. Starting a YouTube channel, yeah. was that a challenge for you? Did you stammer yeah. when you talk to the camera? Um, or? When I'm on my own, I don't because it's a comfort zone. Mm -hmm. It's when you're outside your comfort zone that you do. But So the reason why I started the YouTube channel, one of the main reasons for it was because someone who has a stammer, like what's the worst thing they could possibly think of doing? It's probably like having to talk to a camera you know <laughs> like yeah. that's like one of the hardest things that you could do because I go to meetings for the Maguire course every two weeks like there's hundreds of people all over Ireland that go to them and most people like won't talk on the phone they won't answer the phone to people they won't talk to people in public they just text and stuff like that so I was always thinking like I'd love to have a YouTube channel but it's not possible when you have a stammer after a while if you keep doing it it's going to get easier it's going to happen. do you think yeah. it's helped um, it's definitely given me more confidence, I mm -hmm. suppose, because before, like, people obviously knew I had a stammer, but they're kind of held back a bit about it. But then when you start talking about it in your YouTube videos for, like, literally thousands of people to see, now it's just, like, everyone in college knows that I'm the guy who does YouTube videos and has a stammer. And then once you get more confident about your stammer, it goes because you're not as nervous about it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it kind of works together, the two of them. Have you done any collabs before? No. Is it hard to meet up with someone new and do a video together having yeah. not, not spoken before? Yeah, oh, like definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get you get nervous when you're meeting someone new and all this kind of stuff. But, like, it's you can't really get nervous about stuff like that. You just need to, you need to get on with it and just do it. So what advice would you give to someone who might have a speech defect or have any kind of thing that might hold them back from right. not even just a YouTube channel but doing something they love but they have something that will be an obstacle to them yeah well if you have a stammer anyway we'll start with that if you're over the age of 18 I definitely definitely recommend doing the Maguire program it's literally life changing there was actually a documentary on RTE about it a few days ago um, then for other things like that well what I found works for me is find stuff that you really shouldn't do and do them like if you keep pushing out your comfort zone more and more then your confidence builds more and more and then from that in turn the things that you struggle with you'll get better at them and then eventually they kind of go like I'm never going to lose my stammer but I want to get it to like such a place that I can just control it and just accept it yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, so there you go. That was the video for this week. Be sure to go check out Tig's channel. I will leave the link in the description below and check out the video we did together. If you liked this style of video where I just sat down and chatted to people about stuff they've been through and I think it's quite inspiring that he Cheers, has thanks. a YouTube channel. So <laughs> if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, be sure to hit the thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe to me, subscribe to him, and I'll catch you in the next one. See you there.